Hi guys, this is Corey with the Cellacore Free Auction Template Editor. We're talking about the CSS editor and the Cellacore software and how to use all the different features. Some are more advanced than others, but I like to touch on all of them so we all have an idea of what you can do with them and what you can get from them. So in the other videos, we've already talked about the text and the border, and today we're going to talk about backgrounds. So to get started, we have our same basic template here. It just says Cellacore CSS is awesome. And that's inside just a simple div. You can see that here, not much to that. I just wrote Cellicore CSS is awesome, highlighted it, and clicked here and inserted a div around it. You could also click this to create a new div from scratch and then type the words in there. Either way is fine, we'll give you the same results. So I'm gonna double click inside this div and hit edit CSS style to bring up our CSS editor. So once again, we touched on text and border. This is our preview down here. It shows us that we currently have no CSS applied. And we're gonna move along to background. So background, you see three things, pretty straightforward. Background color, background image, and background gradient. So for this example, I'm gonna make the size 100% of the screen so we can see what each of them do. So very simply, and I'll touch on this size panel in the next video, but we're gonna make this 100% and 100%. The reason why this 100% works is because this is a div element, set the block level. So if you were to use span or something different, or if your div element's not a block level, which would be displayed here, we'll talk about that later as well, you're not going to get the 100%. So that's why it works with div, but it may not work with span or other items. So anyways, back to background. So if I turn on background color, very simple. Background color is a solid color all the way across. So if I were to click on this, obviously I can change it to any color I want. So I'm going to jump over background image for a second and move right along to background gradient. Now background gradient takes precedent over background color. Some coders like to do both as like a default. Generally most browsers are updated that you don't need to use the background color as a default, but you can if you want. So background color, right here we have our sets. This is red, a yellowish, and a green. Just starter colors. We see we have two options here. We have linear and radial. Obviously, I change that. It makes a circular effect. Or if I go linear, it makes a linear effect. And then here we have directions. So I have zero. If I go to zero, it actually, in this order, it goes from it goes from bottom to top. I'm not sure why they programmed it that way. So if you want to go top to bottom, you just put it on 180. But from there, you can go literally any any uh, direction you want you can see I can make that spin around as I click down and hit all our different degrees and of course you could also just put the colors in backwards so we also if you see when I click on this custom over here it changes to 180 degrees I can take this it adds a code in for me for, so I can edit it I can make it something obscure like I don't know 211 if I really wanted that degree in there so let's go back to 90 for now and this requires this requires two colors so if I were to delete off one of these colors you can see that now it just goes from red to yellow so if I were to get rid of all these we'll go in here and click some colors we will click a light blue and then since it needs at least two colors a dark blue and there we have our gradient going across it looks real nice and of course I can make this go down as well so that's how you use gradient. You can add as many colors in as you like. Put a red in the end of it so you see it. So you can see how that it fades across. All right, so back to image, background image. So if you click this on, it'll turn red, tell you that there's no URL in here. This URL is like a web page URL, but it's for the image. If you're familiar with uploading images, you'll know what this is. If not, if you upload it to Cellicore in your Cellicore manager, it'll give you the URL of your image in the Cellicore manager. You can't miss it. So once again, I can open up here. We have extra options. But if I click the image, it opens up another dialog box for us to go to images. So by default, it gives you a preview of this, this GIF image that's animated, the .gif. They're not all of them, but a lot of them are animated, animated images. Excuse me. So I could of course go in here and select my own, or I can go, I have this one here that I found online, right click on it, copy image URL, and I'll paste it in there. And my turn black, tell me this image is good. 
So by default, it calculates the image size. This image size is 425 pixels wide, 420 high, which would be this one. I can change that. Let's say I want it to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. Now, repeat. I can set this to no repeat and I'll put it right there for me. I literally have 100 pixels by 100 pixels, no repeat. I can move my position. I can jump this around 50 across, 50% 50 across, 0% down. You know, go to 50, put it in the middle. Obviously, 50, 100, put it on the bottom. Then we can go the other way, 0, 100 put it down there you know you can move to you can move it around and that will stay in the background so as this this was on the bottom in the middle as your div gets wider with more text or whatever you put in there this would stay there so if we had it down there I could also repeat it I could repeat it horizontally or I could, re I could repeat it vertically so if I wanted to put it as like a letter letter thing on the left just do something as simple as that now, some background images, as you can see, this one doesn't. The one, some of you find are like threaded. They repeat themselves. They're actually designed where, where this one ends off. It'll start again at the top. So it looks like it's one image repeating over and over again. There's lots of those you can find online, lots of free sources for that. This one doesn't happen to be one of those. So another option you have here is scroll or fixed. What this is is when you have text and stuff over top of this, scroll the image will scroll with your text fixed it'll stay so we have a little example here you can see this text this is just example text you can see how that image moves with scroll you can see those little zags going up and down if i change this to fixed they will stay right there and the text scrolls across it so it really just depends on what effect you're going for there this text is just for a preview with that image so you know what you're getting so uh last thing i want to show you with this is that an easy way if you set this to repeat it repeats across if you an easy way to um get the image all the way across your box but it might be skewed a little bit just set this to 100 by 100 pixels so that literally will make it stretch there so you can see this is a real fat zigzag in here however if i were to go to the screen it gets a you know nice big screen it stretches that 100 percent i wanted it to stretch so that is background guys of course I can double click on this go back in and edit it background of course I can jump back into there or I can open this up and those are some of the same settings that were in there if I just want to do quick edits you know no repeat repeat X or whatever attach fix those kind of things I can do that from there so all right guys our next video talk about size so to be the sizing our divs and how to do different things with that this is Corey with StellarCore.com, the free auction template editor. Please leave any questions or comments below. Thank you.